Check this shit out. Years ago, I somehow ended up with two copies of The Untouchables for the NES. I think I bought both of them in a large lot, so my intention was just to keep the best one and toss the other back into the dark abyss that is this Tupperware container in my attic. Turns out I accidentally bought the same game, but with totally different covers, which was totally unexpected. I'm not really someone who collects different versions of the same thing like this, although to be honest, yes, I did buy like five of the variant covers of X-Men number one back in the day. Nerd alert! So that got me thinking, what other NES games had alternate game art? I actually had a hard time googling this, and even saw two links to my own posts on the subject. So hey, I'll do my best to think of every example I can, and if anyone out there can fill in more blanks, I'll do a follow-up video on those. Before I get started, I'm not going to be covering any regional differences. Pretty much every game released for the Famicom in Japan looks different than its North American equivalent. The PAL region, which is Europe and Australia, is a little closer, with notable exceptions like Contra being called Probotector with these robots. Basically, I could spend all day pointing out the comparisons, so we'll stick strictly to the NTSC North American NES. And because I'm petty, I'm going to pick which one of the two I think is the best design. You know, for scientific purposes. Let's start with the aforementioned Untouchables. Well, the obvious difference is that this one showcases a picture of the movie cast, including Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, Andy Garcia, and, um, this guy. The second cover features these three shadowy figures running towards you, packing all the heat available at the time. I've heard people speculate that there was some dispute over the rights, and that the game is based on the Untouchables TV show from 1959, not the 1987 movie? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's based on the movie, but honestly, this is all speculation. The movie version kind of looks like a shitty Photoshop, so I'm gonna go with the shadowy murderers cover here. A similar case exists for Gunsmoke, which is pronounced gun period smoke. I mean, it's not, but that's how it should be said. The more I look at these side by side, the more questions I have. Which one came first? Did they not like the simple drawing and wanted something more detailed and graphic? Or did they feel like this was too realistic looking and instead wanted a more cartoonish look? Questions for the ages right here. I have no idea which is which, and honestly, I have no theories. Like, if you're going to update the image, why not drop the awesome mall photography background that Capcom used in earlier cartridges? And why slightly change the wood sign logo? Someone speculated that the bar represented in this cover was too much for kids, so they replaced it with the saloon in this one. I don't know, that seems kind of flimsy. I actually really love the style and composition of the drawing version of this cartridge, but I'm gonna have to give it to this beautifully painted version here. Probably the most famous variants on the system are the two Zelda games, which were initially released in these gold cartridges, and then later these gray ones. By all accounts, it seems like Nintendo wanted to re-release both games due to their popularity, and chose the gray cartridges to save on costs? I don't know. Beyond the obvious gray versus gold thing, there's a couple interesting changes. The sword on the gold adventure of Link is much larger and crisper than the gray version, while the shield on the gray Legend of Zelda is way sharper looking than the original. Also, both the gold cards have these little descriptions printed on them that are conspicuously missing from the re-releases. There are also some subtle detail changes here, like the placement of the title, the oval versus circle Nintendo seal of approval, and the location and style of the words Nintendo Entertainment System. The most interesting change for me is that the gray Zelda 2 doesn't have the word Zelda 2 on it anywhere. That's an interesting choice. I wonder why they'd remove that of all things. But without needing to explain, the obvious choice is the gold cards here. I mean, come on. Probably my favorite variant is for Metroid. Metroid came out just after the black box era of the NES, where all the labels were black with simple text and images straight from the game. This was done to combat the somewhat disingenuous marketing of earlier video game companies like Atari, who had these insane fantastical representations on the cover, but once you popped it in, it looked like, well, this. This bait and switch promotion was cited as one of the reasons for the great video game crash of 1983, and as such, Nintendo opted for more transparent, what you see is what you get. At the time, Metroid did have pretty great graphics, and compared to something like Urban Champion, this cover was probably a solid selling point. 
Why did they later re-release Metroid with the super dope drawing of Samus on the front? Money, I guess? It couldn't have sold that well since there's not a huge surplus of these yellow cartridges laying around. The choice here is an easy one. The re-release version of Metroid is super fresh, one of the best in the NES library. Moving on to some less obvious variants, let's talk about sports, beginning with Blades of Steel. This one is pretty subtle. Konami re-released Blades of Steel in 1992 with this red label and the words Konami Classic Series at the top. Did they re-release other games for the system too, like Contra or Gradius? If they did, they didn't switch up those labels. Maybe Blades was the first of many to come in the series, but they scrapped it afterward? I don't know. The re-release label uses the same image as the original, just cropped awkwardly to include the red border. The most subtle detail to point out here is that on the end label they removed the Konami D-pad windmill icon. I'm gonna go with the original here, as I think the red border is kinda ugly and doesn't really enhance the image in any way. Staying on the ice, Wayne Gretzky's Hockey had three different covers. Three. Apparently the great one was traded from the Edmonton Oilers to the Los Angeles Kings right after this game was released, so they went back and updated his jersey. At least that's what I thought from reading online, but now that I've looked at these more closely, they're both LA Kings jerseys. I mean, the color did change from white to black, and also, now he wears a helmet? The third one is just Wayne in a blank white jersey. I actually don't have this one because honestly, two copies of Wayne Gretzky's hockey was way too many. Well, I'm gonna give it to the White Kings version here because at least you get to see this amazing head of hair that Wayne was rocking back in the day. Here's a weird one, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Everyone knows this game, it's a classic and still one of the most fun pick up and play games on the NES. Well, apparently Nintendo had a time sensitive license to use Mike Tyson's image and name in this game. So when they re-released it as Punch-Out in 1990, they removed Iron Mike's name from the cover and changed his in-game character to Mr. Dream. Otherwise, it's the exact same game. Some people have speculated that Tyson was removed because of his imprisonment, but the newly christened Punch-Out was released in 1990, a year before his arrest. As for the covers, it's kind of funny how they use the exact same framing as the original, but went for a hand-drawn look. You can see more of the Punchy's face, their shorts are different colors, and Mike Tyson has been replaced by this lazy-eyed white dude. My favorite change is the ref, who went from this thin-haired baby-faced man to this mustachioed sex pest with a Chia Pet fro. Love it. I'm gonna go with the Punch-Out version here because, you know, Tyson's a piece of shit. An obvious candidate for variants are the Tengen games, which saw releases in both their patented black rhombus carts and some official gray ones. I've actually got a lot I want to say about Tengen in general, and that includes these variants, the Tengen Tetris, and more, so I think I'll save that for another video. However, they do get some discussion here with Pac-Man. Tengen originally released Pac-Man for the NES in 1990 and then later put out their own unlicensed version of the classic arcade game. After doing this with a few other titles like RBI Baseball and Temple of Doom, Nintendo and Tengen got in a huge legal battle which pretty much ended their role as a third party developer. The actual developers of Pac-Man, Namco, re-released this title themselves in 1993 with all new artwork. The games themselves are exactly the same, just with their respective logos showing up on the opening screen. Both these covers are awesome. The Tengen one features a terrified Pac-Man, wearing a hat, running away from the Ghost Boys. It looks like he's a Wall Street broker who asks the wrong tough guys about scoring coke. The Namco version is the opposite, featuring a more cartoony version of Pac, lording over the ghost with his perfectly spherical crack rock. This dude looks terrified, and I think the lady ghost is ready to get down. I'm gonna call this a tie. Both these covers are equal parts hilarious and amazing. Last up is probably my favorite variant scenario of them all, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. These are two totally different games released two years apart with identical titles and practically identical cover art. I get these two confused all the time, and it's only when I pop them in that I remember which one is the terrible Last Crusade and which one is the terribly awful Last Crusade. There are some subtle differences to the labels, such as the framing of Indiana's horse, the slight different blue tinting of the image, as well as the location of the title. The most obvious difference is the end labels, but the real way to tell them apart is by the developer, which is either Ubisoft or Taito. Why did this happen? How did this happen? I have no earthly idea. 
And this isn't Tengen Tetris vs Nintendo Tetris levels is similar. Once you get past the covers, these games look and play nothing alike. I actually have a lot more to say about both of them, but I'm going to get more in depth in a later video, so stay tuned. My choice for the best looker is the Taito version, just because I can actually read the end label. And that's all I can think of. Or at least that's all I've got in my collection. If anyone can think of some variants I missed, please bring them up in the comments section so we can debate whether they technically fit my arbitrary set of criteria or not. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Until next time.